Today on the show, we have a founder and CEO, Basim Tabara of Crossplane. Crossplane is an open source Kubernetes add-on that adds platform teams to assemble, that enable, excuse me, platform teams to assemble infrastructure from multiple vendors. It's a sandbox project rocketing towards incubation. I've been a fan of these folks for a long time. Spotlight starts now. All right, so before I bring in Bossom, I just want to do the uh, disclaimer. This is an official live stream of the CNCF, and as such is a subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. Please do not do anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that Code of Conduct. Basically, please be respectful of all. Welcome to Spotlight Live, Bassam. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, Dan. And we've been friends for a while. You know, I've been like, I've been how like, let's, we want to figure out the perfect time to like just sit down and talk about crossplay because you know I've been a fan of y'all. Because I did a live stream with uh, Sig Dan member, uh, uh, Dan Mangum, and I was like, this project is so fantastic. And I was like, you know, um, I really want to know like the background. Like, how did it start? Like, some one day you were like, I need to solve the world's infrastructure issues through code. Like, how did you do it? Like, let's talk about that. <laughs> uh... So the crossplane origin story goes back to probably 2016. I was working on another project then. It was called, uh, the Rook project that I helped start. Um, and if you if you remember, Rook is uh, essentially a control plane for storage, and it was built on Kubernetes, and it was designed to kind of manage storage infrastructure. And it was so cool because it was early days. I was looking at kind of Kubernetes and thinking about. Uh, this was the year kind of when Kubernetes won the container orchestration war, if you remember. Um, and it was kind of starting to emerge as the clear winner. And what I saw was not Kubernetes as a container platform. I saw Kubernetes as a, a generic control plane that could be used in scenarios well beyond containers. And so um, Rook was a great example of that because it built, it was a control plane for storage. It was using the Kubernetes control plane but it was essentially built for to manage storage systems, um, and so you know I got excited about the whole approach. I saw I saw the you know that this could be this you know the Kubernetes control plane can be used to manage all things, all things infrastructure or and cross clouds or hybrid or multi cloud, and then went off and started a company. And Crossplane was born at Upbound uh, with a charter of essentially bringing the control plane approach that was pioneered in Kubernetes to the general problem of managing cloud infrastructure. In some ways, you can think of, say, Crossplane as uncontainerizing uh, Kubernetes, uh, which which is you know part, uh, you know a, a silly way of saying it, but it is uh, it is kind of what we're doing. We're bringing the control plane of Kubernetes to the general problem of managing application and infrastructure. So, Basam, I, I, do you get this question though? It's like, wow. So, I mean, Kubernetes is complicated enough. I need so I need to have another control plane to control other infrastructure. Do you get that question a lot? Uh, yes, uh, there's a lot of people that that you know, Kubernetes is not known for being simple. But I think if you change the perspective a little bit and think of Kubernetes as not the developer facing, uh, you know, uh, a platform, but more of a a middle layer. Uh, in between, say, application developers and whatever they consume, whether it's pipelines or cons consoles or CLIs or however they're doing their work and building their applications. And then you think of think of Kubernetes as the middle layer that it sits between them and the cloud or infrastructure in general. And so in some ways, if you think of Kubernetes as a middle layer, uh, it middle layers tend to be complex they tend to be they tend to offer a lot of flexibility they because people are using them to build their own kind of opinionated platforms and other other things on top and so uh yeah i i share the sentiment uh but i also think it's a matter of perspective understood so if everybody who's jo just joining us again i have basam tabara he's the ceo and founder of crossplane and we're just going through the motions i want to ask you this love the logo the ice cream. Look, I mean, you, 
you know, like we all love ice cream and we all love icicles. So tell me, explain the, the logo. Can we talk about Cross Plains logo? <laughs> so, so credit for the logo goes to our, our uh, designer, Matt, Matt Heilman. And um, uh, to be quite honest, I was kind of against it. I to, just to be, to be, uh, <laughs> but the idea was, you know, so we, we picked the name Cross Plain um, among many other choices uh, that were there. I'll, someday I'll tell you about how many domain names and GitHub organizations I'm hoarding. But uh, uh, so, so we landed on Crossplane, and uh, and it, it was essentially a play on, play on the both the word cross cloud and control plane. And so um, we were kind of trying to go for a name that becomes a noun, or you know, you could say, hey, look, I brought in a crossplane and I connected it up to AWS, and uh, and I don't know if that's stuck uh, that way, but that was the intention of that you can basically drop crossplane anywhere you're using the word control plane. Um, and so the popsicle came kind of fall of that thinking, which is, uh, you know, if it's cross cloud, then you need, we were looking for something that uh, had multi flavor in it, multi cloud, multi things. And so we ended up with, and we wanted something that was playful. And I think the, the, the idea was, hey, what, was a, what if it was a multi flavor, multi colored popsicle? Pop, everybody loves popsicles. So, uh, and so there is your multi-flavored popsicle, and that's how we landed on it. Um, you should see that. Other I think choices. it was preordained yeah, that we would have this interview. I'll compile the alternatives, uh, so you know, one day we can look at those. But it was preordained that we'd have this because you had a popsicle. Now you're on, you know, pops spotlight live. You see how it goes? It's all it's all circular. Right? It's all circular. There, there we go. Yeah, this it was uh, it was it was fate. <laughs> yep, it was fate. So, so Carlos Bernardo asked that question. You you nailed it. You got that one out there. And also, we have our friend. Uh, which, by the way, I I could spend an hour just talking about Hash Dan. That guy, like you, love. I'm sorry, that guy. I, you could build ten companies around that dude. So kudos Dan is to Hash Dan. Star. We love Dan. Yeah, not a doubt. So um, let's go back to again. You're at Ruck, and there's this original problem you're trying to solve, and it was like. What are we, we doing? Like, I, I want to st start a company because I don't want to have to deal with this shit anymore. Pardon my French. Let's go. Like, yeah, no, like, so look, I, once you once you get exposed to how control planes kind of help simplify and automate a ton of the toil that we deal with as as uh, you know uh, operations engineers and uh, cloud engineers in general. I mean, you see it like when when you kubectl apply and you say, okay, uh, Kubernetes, please run you know, three replicas of this container for me, right? That, that you give it this declarative statement and then Kubernetes goes off and makes sure there are three three replicas of the container running. If a node goes away, if a node comes back, uh, it's still managing that on your behalf. You don't have to get involved. It'll, if a node goes down that's running one of your replicas, it'll restart it somewhere else. That logic and that approach uh, motivated us to kind of start Crossplane and so that we can bring that approach to all of cloud infrastructure and not just containers, right? Like when you when you want to, you know, when when you want to uh, kind of light up infrastructure, say in AWS, right? Um, you should be able to, in the same way, kubectl apply it, apply the change, and then let the control plane from that point onward handle the deployment, the provisioning, the scaling, the lifecycle management, handle all of it. Like that should be an autonomous process. And it should be something that humans don't have to get involved in. And so um, once we saw that happening in the Kubernetes space, we got motivated to kind of say, well, can we bring that? Can that be the new way that we manage infrastructure in the cloud? Can that? And ironically, like the, the thing, you know, people don't realize, but that's literally how the largest platforms in the world are built. If you peek behind the scenes in AWS, that, who are you, when you ask for an S3 bucket, what's the entity behind the scenes that's serving that API, that's taking that request, that's deploying, allocating a bucket and that, you know, essentially allocating to you, doing all the billing, doing all the metering around it. It's the control plane um, in AWS. Everything in most large cloud providers, everything is split between control plane and data plane. And it was time to bring that approach to, to kind of to become mainstream in everything that we're doing in the open source community and in enterprises at a whole, at large. One of the things, like I said, I was I did that live stream at Hash Dan, and you know, I was, he kind of showed me what was going on. I played with it, and I'm like, this is incredible. 
because it was before I was like, okay, I go to my cloud for formation scripts. I would do all these things to get everything deployed. Then I have to put my applications on top of it. And I'm like, this is, this is great. But like one of the things that, you know, here is, okay, I, I can, what would I, why would I use this over say like a Terraform or like cloud bolt or something like that? Like, why would I, you know, use a uh, cross plane or upbound over other tools? Yeah, it, it might be useful to kind of just kind of review the differences between the, the approaches. Um, and you know, so, so Terraform is in the class of tooling that are, you know, it's commonly referred to as infrastructure as code, right? Um, and and infrastructure as code tooling is amazing. Like it's it, Terraform, Terraform is, as well is, is a fantastic and widely adopted project, right? And But if you think about the problem being solved there, it was how do we arrive at a declarative configuration that we can reproduce, easily reproduce, right? Um, it's designed for a human operator to run. So you're basically saying, look, I wanna describe my infrastructure. I author it as a configuration. Typically it's a domain specific language like HCL or more popular these days are traditional pro programming languages, Python, TypeScript, et cetera, right? But what I'm doing is I'm authoring a, a declarative configuration of a set of infrastructure. The design, the design point is that once you have that configuration, you as a human get to apply it, whether it's you know TF apply or it's run a program. You're applying. You the human are applying the 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 uh, configuration, and you as a human are looking at the the diff of what changes are to be made in you know your cloud provider. And so you're approving these changes and you apply it. And that point, the infrastructure is lit up and the tool's out of the way, right? Um, and if you want to make other additional changes, you have to come back, edit the configuration, apply, potentially deal with drift, and then uh, changes happen. You approve them. It's designed to be a human workflow all the way to app applying and, you know, and lighting up infrastructure. Control planes work differently. Control planes... First of all, they serve not a, you don't, you can author things in templates or configuration like YAML or, or you can also do that in, you know, whatever, pick your, your tooling of choice. But the first primary difference is that you, once you author these things, you're interacting with an API. The API, there's an API that represents every resource that you want to configure, deploy, manage, right? Versus, so the interaction is you're talking to RESTful endpoints to create the configuration. You're not just authoring the configuration in a template and then invoking and applying the tool. But the more interesting scenarios come in when the human workflows end when you apply the configuration to control. You're out of the way. You don't have to sit and wait for it to come up or manage the order in which it comes up or if you have a scale act or an upgrade act, that can be done autonomously by a set of robots, controllers that are running inside the control plane. So the, 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 the workflow becomes you as humans collaborate on configuration, whether it's Git, you know, GitOps is a popular term these days. Um, the human workflow ends as soon as you hand it over to the control plane. And from that point onwards, the control plane is autonomously making changes, applying changes in order. When things go down, it's able to reconcile them and, and essentially bring up infrastructure and fix it. That is a fundamental difference between infrastructure as code tooling and control planes. And so, so back to your original question, how, why would I use this over uh, Terraform? Honestly, that it comes down to um, a few things. One, you can achieve a much higher degree of automation with control planes than you can with any infrastructure as code tooling. It's it's that it's that simple um, because you're running autonomous controllers. The other is is one that's less obvious is that you can actually organize around control planes because they the the unit that they expose is an API, and so you can consume APIs from any tool, any framework, any language. Look at the healthy ecosystem built around the Kubernetes API. It's unbelievable how many tools and consoles and UI and pipelines and that have built and talk Kubernetes API on the back end, right? Com compare that to any of the popular infrastructure as code tooling and look at the ecosystem around them, right? APIs promote 
a larger ecosystem. APIs promote organizational boundaries that enable teams to scale. Um, and so, and they come up with access control and they come with all sorts of other benefits. But, but that, those are the primary reasons I would, I would think of um, when, you know, making a choice between using, uh, you know, infrastructure as code tooling and, and uh, control planes. One, one other thing I'd say that comes up, especially in the cloud native world, if you've already adopted Kubernetes and you're running Kubernetes, there is much less friction to use something like Crossplane than to figure out how to shell out to some external process and run multiple pipelines and figure out, you know, run infrastructure as code tooling and light up one part of it and bring credentials back and stuff them into secrets. And uh, you can avoid all of that by letting your developers self-service on infrastructure using the same tooling and pipelines and uh, you know, that they're used to and using today with Kubernetes. That part makes the whole process frictionless. Fantastic. And again, I mean, if I was a TLDR, it's just that, you know, it's a control plane over a tool. You have all the, you know, the, the, the aspects of that, the authorization, all, all that, that you can bind into, you know, and, and that's fantastic. And you're touching the APIs directly. You have a question from Carlos Panato. It's a new guy. I've never heard of him. I've heard of him once a couple of times. Uh, is it possible to import existing infrastructure to Crossplane? Yes, uh, it is possible. So every managed resource in Crossplane has a notion of an external identity, and you could use that um, to adopt existing resources. Um, we're actually looking into, and, and, and uh, we mentioned uh, Hashdan earlier, but um, we're looking into a set of uh, tooling that actually makes that a lot easier so that you can go directly to a, a account in, a, say, AWS, and then generate and adopt the resources that are already running there as part of Crossplane, um, and so so there are lots of lots more things happening there. But today, yes, you can adopt existing resources and and into a, a, a Crossplane environment. Uh, you mentioned Hash Dan. Of course, he came in. He has a question. Can you talk about a, a tick, talk a bit about the permission model of Crossplane? Maybe compare and <laughs> contrast with IAC tools. Yeah. So so one of the things that um, is a fundamental difference is that every resource, think of S3 buckets and RDS instances and EC2 instances, and all of the resources that are exposed by, uh, say, cloud providers get their own API endpoints in Crossplane. So you can go to a Crossplane, you can say, you know, uh, apply a change to light up an RDS instance, and you're talking directly to that one RESTful endpoint. So the beauty of that it mean, is that you can now do access control at a resource level, not at a workspace or template or program level. You bet you're able to say, team A can deploy RDS instances and team B can deploy EC2 instances. And you can even change your mind about access control without having to change any of the configurations uh, that you have in place. And so it becomes a lot easier to support multiple teams with different separation of concerns or DevSecOps versus DevOps or you know, um, all within one control plane and set the access control policies and do so without having to you know, artificially break, put things into smaller modules or you know, uh, have to refactor everything as you change access control. And so that's a, that's a power of being in a control plane that you don't see in most other infrastructure as code tooling that, you know, where they primarily, the unit of access control is an entire workspace or an entire program. Um, and that's, that's, that's a pretty important difference. Awesome. I have a question, but before we get to that, you all, if you haven't already, please go ahead and click that like um, follow over there in the top and, and subscribe to Cloud Native TV on Twitch. We're always looking to subscribe here. You're gonna see a lot of amazing shows just like this, and we try to do this all week, but this is for the community and by the community. So I, I have a question. Have you, is there is there like a, a time where you were like, wow, somebody took the technology we built and they did something so awesome. Like I just, you, your mind was blown. Let's talk about that. Um, there's a lot of actually interesting uses. Just, just yesterday. Besides working with Dana every single day and seeing whatever <laughs> that guy comes up with. <laughs> I have to say we have a we have a fantastic team at Upbound. So I'm like every day I'm wowed by by all the things that we're we're doing around Crossplane and everything else. 
Um, but the more general question, kind of community-wise, I think, so, so a project like Crossman is very central, right? It, you have to build a lot of providers and integrations to it to, to connect it to different things, right? Um, and, uh, and so like every day we see, or every week we see uh, another integration into Crossmind that makes, you know, puts it to use in a, a domain that we haven't necessarily thought about uh, or in an approach that we haven't thought about. Like just yesterday, we, there was this massive blog that came out from AWS on integrating Spinnaker with Crossplane to essentially let the whole Spinnaker users now start deploying infrastructure directly from their existing pipelines, which is what a fantastic use case, right? It's like, you know, if you're using Spinnaker, you're, you're happy with Spinnaker, you can now use it to deploy infrastructure and let your team self-service from the same pipelines they're using. More and more of this you'll see, we're seeing on a, on a daily and a weekly basis um, around the Crossman community. One of, one of a, um, one of the folks that we know is kind of deploying crossplane production, you know, like they use it, they're using it in a, you know, a lot of financial context. We're seeing, we're seeing it applied in all sorts of different segments of the industry. And it's just super, super exciting to see the adoption. It's super exciting to see how people are integrating it as a centerpiece of their modernization effort. It's fantastic. And again, because of that easy use, because it's able to touch so many different things at the API level, I just, that's why I, when when he, when he showed it to me originally, I'm like, right now it's amazing. I don't and and that this was like six months ago or six to eight months ago. It's it's incredible. We have uh, another question. And um, what about integration with modern tools like Datadog or Prometheus or anything like that? So so there's um, two things that I think of here. One is does cross crossplane itself exposes a set of uh, you know telemetry and, and and tracing that could be used by a lot of tools for it you know for crossplane itself. And I think the other way to think about this is can crossplane be used to automate, you know, uh, uh, monitoring systems like Prometheus and Datadog. And I think that would require a provider for Datadog, um, which I don't believe exists. Although I, I've heard rumors that somebody's working on one. If you use like some of the native prim uh, primitives of like Prometheus and stuff like that, I think that you originally were like, outputting to like, you know, just regular like, you know, cube system level logging and all of that fun stuff. Because I remember I was able to get Sysdig to be able to get some of the data out of it when we were working through it. So I think it's infinitely yeah. possible. Yeah, it's also, I, I again, we it's support, modular. So. We, we support a bunch of that uh, today. So you you can actually integrate cross plane telemetry into your your Prometheus systems and and, and, other, and others. Um, there's a question here from Borco and it's basically what cloud providers are supported at present. One particular cloud better, better supported currently or is, this, is it pretty equal among the providers? Very, very good question. So, so, um, we support AWS, we support Azure, we support, uh, Google, we support, um, Alibaba cloud and IBM cloud. Uh, those are the kind of providers that are out there today and, and obviously more cover. Equinix is another one that I think has support today and there are more, more coming. Um, it, it brings up a really interesting point because like when you think of Crossplane, uh, for it to be used everywhere, we have to have a provider for every infrastructure vendor out there. And so uh, there are really two ways we're approaching this problem as a community. One, um, we, welcome contributions. We work with the vendors directly. We're doing, we have a great relationship with the cloud providers and we work with them on generating cross-plane providers uh, from their backend infrastructure. So we do, for example, we're doing this with Amazon um, and we have a, a project together that essentially generates a cross-plane resources directly from their backend Go SDKs, right? And uh, we support that effort and it works really well. Um, so it's going to take time to get to full coverage, and we're working on on accelerating that uh, as a community. But it's also going to take a village, right, uh, to to bring all the missing resources and try to get to 100% you know, coverage of every infrastructure vendor out there, right? The other approach that that we're um, we've invested in, and we're going to see us do a lot more to kind of uh, get get more bootstrapped here is we're wrapping Terraform providers and bringing them into the control plane. And so that's an effort that we started uh, last year. Um, we got, that's how we actually do the VMware provider, vSphere provider today, is you can wrap the Terraform provider, not the Terraform engine. So you're not 
stuck to using infrastructure as code tooling, but just the provider itself. Um, and then bringing it into the cross-plane uh, control plane, it start. It looks like native CRDs and controllers for them, and you don't have to, you know, do, do anything with Terraform. Um, and so that with that approach, we think we can get to uh, fuller coverage sooner, um, while still investing in native providers, and and you'd be able to swap them out in future. One of the things I thought was cool. Let's talk about that VMware provider because I remember when that kind of somewhat kicked off. It was like a Twitter. Somebody was like, "Hey, I wanted to do this." And everybody hopped on it. That's the beauty of the community, y'all. It was like, hey, we want to do this. Crossplane put this out there. And then like everybody, some VMware people jumped in. And that provider was out there within a week. That's uh, that's it, right. And that, this is the beauty of you know working with open source projects and especially ones that follow an open governance, right? Model like like Crossplane and Kubernetes itself. Like there is uh, you know, when you when you build something, it's available for everyone to use. Um Anyone can become a maintainer. There's a ladder level that you can, you know, through based well, can on- Can we talk about that, Boston? Let's talk about those. For, first thing, how does somebody get involved in, in just contributing to Crossplane? Like, oh, it, the simplest way is just to join our Slack channel, slack.crossplane.io. Um, you can, it's a very friendly community. It's, there are probably 3,000 people now in the Slack workspace. Um, we can help you get started on contributing, whether it's, documentation or all the way to writing a provider in Crossplane. Um, and uh, we document our, we have a, you know, go to the Crossplane repo, governance.md describes the process for how you become a maintainer or even a steering committee member. Um, again, the project is hosted by the CNCF. It follows an open source model. It follows an open governance model. It's designed, but it's by design. Uh, you know, for the community, by the people, for the people uh, type project. Uh, and it's it's fitting because it's so central. And you, if you're, if we're going to arrive at essentially, you know, a control plane that connects to everything, it can't be, con that control plane can't be necessarily tied to one vendor or one platform or one company, right? It has to be, uh, it has to be something that we as a community rally around we put all our effort around, and then we arrive at something that is much larger than the sum, uh, much larger than the you know the, the individual pieces, but is 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 much stronger project for it. I just remember like when autopilot came out, you all had a you know a provider in there like in like a day. It was yeah. incredible. Even Kelsey was like, hey, you know, uh, within a day you all had it. So and that's exactly what you just said because it's just open enough for people to con contribute and all that. Let me ask you this: What's the difference? I see an upbound in the and then and upbound, what's the difference between upbound and cross plane, just so folks understand the differences? So, so upbound is, is uh, the company uh, behind cross plane. We started the project, we donated it to the CNCF, um, and we offer a set of commercial offerings um, around cross plane. So, starting with a downstream distribution of cross plane, which by itself is also open source, uh, it's called upbound universal cross plane UXB. And then up on cloud, which is a management layer that gives you a single point of control to, you know, essentially all your infrastructure and, and gives you visibility on what your teams are doing. And the up on registry, which is a free offering um, and is a library for, you know, cross-plane providers and configurations. And, um, and so we, we, you know, think of upbound as helping enterprises that are adopting cross-plane um, accelerate time to market. We help them, you know, be successful quicker with control planes. And typically they come to us and say, help us get this control plane uh, technology in deployed into our environments, help us scale it, help us you know, be the vendor that we, we, uh, we want to rely on. And that's, that's kind of what Upbound does around this. Obviously, having started a project, we have a lot of folks that work on cross plane, um, but uh, you know, there, there are lots of other companies now and maintainers from all different parts of the industry that are part of it as well. So, Basam, let's talk about what's what's next. So I know, again, we're in the incubation process. You know, I think I was the first one on the PR. I was like, plus one, this is awesome. Good. Yeah, you know, I wish they get it tomorrow. It's just fantastic. So, um, you know, good luck with that process. Um, Thank you. 
what, what's yeah, the next so, so um, on the cross plane side, obviously getting to incubation, the vote is imminent. Uh, we're at about to be kicked off publicly. Um, and um, the other thing that's happening is that we're, we created a conformance program around cross plane um, that also is still subject to a vote on the CNCF side. But the idea there was to you know, enable folks to, when they're building providers, to ensure that there's consistency across them and that you can become a certified provider for Crossplane or a cer certified distribution of Crossplane, um, just like Upbound's UXV. Um, and so that, that, um, that effort, we think, will help uh, bootstrap uh, and accelerate the adoption of Crossplane and the ecosystem around it. Um, in terms of a roadmap on Crossplane, lots of interesting things coming. We're actually definitely looking into Terraform, uh, supporting more of a Terraform providers and even Terraform migration scenarios that, that a lot of people are asking for. Uh, so you'll see more of that in future releases. Uh, and actually, there's there's a, a, a live stream on it on, on Monday, on the 12th, uh, around the whole Terraform thing. Um, and then, where, where can they see that? Is is that they go to crossplane.io? There's details for that. Uh, I I believe it's on. Uh, I'll, I we'll we'll put the link on. It's it's uh, it's a live stream on YouTube. Um, oh, okay, got it. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be part of our um, crossplane channel crossplane channel on YouTube as well. So got it. Mm -hmm. And then, um, uh, so that you know, and, and we're looking at improving composition and all the cool things we're doing around. Uh, letting people kind of compose infrastructure and expose it, uh, both in terms of develop the developer experience around it, so it can make it easier for people to kind of author compositions, but also the flexibility and support that's in it. So you'll see more more happening in that in that space as well, and then accelerating provider coverage. So you, you've heard me talk about this; it's one of our biggest uh, uh, challenges, and uh, it's uh, you know what something that we are putting a ton of ton of effort around. On the upbound side, obviously, there is a lot of really cool features as well um, around UXP and upbound cloud. And, and But we're mostly focusing on, right now, trying to get folks to, to production quicker with, with Crossplane. Again, and I should correct, uh, the live stream is actually today. It's less than an hour. So it's like literally back to back uh, where uh, there will be a, an awesome live stream on, on, on Terraform from uh, uh, Nick and Victor. Heavyweights. We just like Heavyweight. you all tune tune in there. So again, if you go to like their YouTube or you can go to Crossplane IO or you can go to Crossplane underscore IO for their Twitter, it'll have the details for that. Um well ba Basam, I, I really appreciate you being on the show today. We uh we tackled a lot of stuff today. Is there any last uh, last words you got? Uh uh you know it takes a village so please come join us on the you know crossplane Slack um Again, lots of really interesting things happening in this project. If you're looking for a project to start with uh, or kind of get into open source with, Crossplane is a fantastic place to do that. So we, we'd we welcome everyone in the community to come, come play with it, contribute, uh, use it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on Spotlight Live. Thanks, Danny. I really appreciate it. Um, thanks. No worries. All right, everyone. So, uh, you know, I'm, again, super fan of of Crossplane. I'm so happy I got to talk to Basam. Um, so we got, I'll just tell you about the next week. So I'm, I'm going to be off next week. Uh, just every two weeks, I'm going to be off next week. Um, Solid State starts up on Monday with uh, Tim Banks. Again, if you aren't watching that show, you need to. I mean, it's just great because he's he's getting underrepresented folks on talking about their their journeys. It's, it's great. Um, Cloud, cloud native Latinx again with Leonardo. It's just a you know a bunch of you know Latinx folks that are in the community doing great things. You all should definitely check that out. Uh, I think that's on Tuesday. Um, Cat Cat's back with Cloud Native Classroom, and there's just a bunch of stuff next week. So we had a little lull since the holiday, but then we're coming back strong. Appreciate all of you for following us. Tell everybody about this, everyone. Just go tell everybody about Cloud Native TV. Um, last thing I'll talk about is registration for KubeCon and Cloud Native Con North America is open and in person. You know, uh, just make sure you're checking out the, you know, the, that. And if you haven't registered, please go ahead and register. Um, lastly, and again, I hope to see you all there. I really want to give you all hugs if that's okay. At some point, just say hello to you all. And just remember, community, the spotlight is on you.